Hello everyone and welcome to our Cargill Confectionery Series. I'm Coco Joe and this video's topic is viscosity. Let's talk all about viscosity, what it is and uh, why it is important. Viscosity is how flowable the chocolate is and it's important depending on the, your application. You may want a very thin flowable viscosity. Uh, if you're doing thin hollow shell molding, you may want a very thick viscosity. If you're doing hand dipping and you want to decorate your chocolates and you want to hold that decoration. On your right is our Peter's Brock Milk Chocolate. This is in our thinnest viscosity, which is 27 Brookfield. We make this particular chocolate in three different viscosities. A thin version, which as I mentioned is great for hollow shell molding. The middle viscosity, a 37 Brookfield, is really good for all around chocolate use or for enrobing. And then the thickest viscosity, 47 Brookfield, is perfect for hand dipping. As I mentioned, it holds that decoration. Now on your left are chocolate chips. And chocolate chips are typically a thicker viscosity and are not designed to be melted. Uh, they're designed to be used in baking or as an inclusion. And so they tend to be very thick if you do melt them. Just to show you the difference, a thin 27 viscosity on your right and a thicker probably 60 or 70 Brookfield viscosity of the dark chocolate chips melted. Now I mentioned that Brookfield scale and that's named after the piece of equipment that we use to measure viscosity, which is a Brookfield viscometer. We completely melt the chocolate and we measure the fluidity of it. And that scale range is roughly from 15 upwards to 60 or 70. The higher the number, the thicker the chocolate. Now you may be familiar with another scale, which is the McMichael scale. And that's named after an older version of viscometers that are no longer manufactured. But a lot of our customers are used to that scale. And so for many years, we've been converting our Brookfield readings over to McMichael. That multiplication factor is roughly three and a half. So if you take the Brookfield reading and multiply it by approximately 3.5, you'll convert it to McMichael. Uh, but Cargill is phasing that McMichael uh, out and we're measuring in Brookfield and also communicating to customers the Brookfield viscometer readings. You can adjust the viscosity of your chocolate by adding melted cocoa butter. If you need a thinner chocolate to reduce your viscosity, this is the best way to do it. It's much easier if you melt the cocoa butter and add it in as a liquid into your chocolate. So simply add it in and mix. Now we don't recommend any other fats to be added to the chocolate to thin it out. Uh, as they won't be compatible with chocolate. Cocoa butter is the main fat, and that's the best thing to add to your chocolate to thin it out. One more point on viscosity. When we publish the viscosity of the chocolate that we sell, that's completely melted. We make that measurement at 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that when you temper chocolate, you're pre-crystallizing a portion of the cocoa butter, so you are thickening the chocolate. We estimate that tempered chocolate is roughly double the viscosity or twice as thick as, your, as the untempered chocolate that you're starting with. So keep that in mind as you're using your chocolate because most of the time you'll be tempering your chocolate and you do thicken it up when you temper it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more videos in our Cargill Confectionery series. I'm Coco Joe. Have a sweet day.